Hey everybody, Tom Marks, PC editor at IGN, here with Jacob from CD Projekt Red, writer on Thronebreaker The Witcher Tales. How you doing? I'm doing great, thanks. So we are we are looking at it. This is Thronebreaker. Mm -hmm. This is the game. And it's uh, essentially kind of an open world version of Gwent. The, it was the single player, and now it's its own standalone yeah, it, thing. Yeah, it has a, um, an, an interesting development history. So uh, initially this was planned to be uh, a single player add-on to uh, Gwent, uh, but... It sort of mutated into this huge uh, single-player game, so we decided to m uh, turn it into a standalone. So it's an it's an RPG game. It's a story-heavy RPG game with a lot of uh, choices and consequences and a lot of non-linearities, which shares some of the gameplay mechanics with uh, uh, Gwent, the card game. Yeah, and it, it, that's the thing that struck me is this really does feel like an open-world RPG. You're yeah. exploring. You're you you saw the large map. You have mm -hmm. all these little quest markers. Yeah. Lots of side quests to yeah. do. So, uh, so basically, this is uh, one of the five maps uh, which which comprise the the, the whole uh, campaign, and each of them is uh, a few hours long. So we estimated, depending on how you will play the game, it's anything between uh, 20 to 30 hours of gameplay. Uh, and there's a lot of uh, side quests and po points of interest if you want to, you know, explore and really learn everything there is about the world of The Witcher. And you can pick up, I, I like this a lot, you pick up a little loot, which gives yeah. you money and materials to yeah. build up your army, which is essentially your deck. Yes, basically. So uh, y you have a camp, and, and there's a lot of structures that you can build and upgrade, and then these uh, open up access to further units uh, and, and further game mechanics. So um, you need to collect resources in order to have uh, uh, you know, enough uh, to, to, to build stuff. And I really like this menu, this because mm -hmm. you can even go into your mess yeah, tent. You yeah, can, and talk, with you can your talk to your friends. companions, yeah. just like have a little chats with them. Yeah. So uh, right now, th you, this is the beginning of our adventure. So we we only have uh, one companion uh, here with us, uh, apart oh, from our master spider in the corner. But later on in the game, the canteen will be uh, filled with with characters, um, and each of them has a story for you uh, to uh, you know to find out. And uh, some of them like each other, some of them don't, and then you'll have to choose you know whose advice to follow and and whose ire to uh, uh, Aaron if you if you uh, ignore their suggestions so there's a lot of teamwork here uh, more so than than in, uh, in our previous games which are you know mostly about this one guy Geralt of Rivia uh, Meeve has an entire retinue of advisors and officers and she has to uh, you know navigate her way around uh, their uh, conflicting personalities and, and goals and these aren't, you know, full 3D Witcher mm -hmm. cutscenes, but they're still pretty in-depth little dialogues, choices yeah. you can make. Mm -hmm. You can ha make uh, decisions that do actually affect yeah. uh, outcomes and different things mm -hmm. in the game. There's yeah. lots of little lore like this. Yeah. I really love all the mm -hmm. little added things that you have in this game. Yeah. Uh, and then also... There's the deck builder, yeah, exactly. and you can so go in and actually do mm -hmm. things like get different versions of Meave, which have different weapons, which yep. give her different powers in the field, exactly. uh, build new cards that are outfitting your army. Mm -hmm. uh, and let's jump in and see if we can't find a fight or something like that to actually yeah, show off what that is like. Exactly. So, so we open up the map, maybe yeah. we'll have a point of interest. Uh, yep. Why don't we move our way towards this little cave mm -hmm. over here? Um, so we play as uh, Zmeev, uh, Queen of Lyria and Rivia, who has just returned to her uh, realms after a, a royal summit. Um, and she found out that her uh, realms have been invaded by the Empire of Nilfgaard. And she is now on her way to Dravograd, a city that's besieged by, uh, by Nilfgaardian forces. And, and she, she's on her way to uh, help uh, with, with, with the defense. But on her way, she might turn, you know. As as with every important else, fantasy exactly. quest, you get mm -hmm. distracted by lots of other things yes. to do. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff to do. <laughs> In this case, a troll in a mm -hmm. cave. Instinctively brought her shield up, convinced a Nilfgaardian catapult had lobbed a boulder their way. When the boulder landed in the road ahead, it smashed into splinters and proved an empty barrel. This is what they've cast at us. Barrels. Is this some jest? Well, they're not known for their sense of humor, the Nilfgaardians, answered Reynard. And you said there was mm -hmm. actually, we were talking beforehand, you said there was actually more VO mm -hmm. in this game than there was in the entire Hearts of Stone expansion for The Witcher 3? Yeah, so um, there, there's a lot of uh, story for you uh, to, to, to experience. Um, and and uh, yeah, we have more lines than the Hearts of Stone expansion. Um, and there are different ways in which uh, we, uh, you know, tell the story. So uh, one of one of the ways in which we uh, t tell our stories are, are text events like these, where you have uh, an illustration to write, and the narrator um, 
describing what, what, what happened, but you also have dialogues and, um, and cutscenes. And so right now we're actually choosing to help mm -hmm. a troll mm -hmm. who is fighting against Nilf Nilfgaardians, yep. which I didn't expect when we came across a troll. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so this battle is, it has special rules, yeah. right? It's got win the battle with more points without letting Shoop die or be captured. Yeah, so since uh, this is a uh, single-player game, we, we could play more with the uh, rule set, and, and there's, there are a lot of battles which... Uh, have a custom uh, set of rules. Uh, and a, and a yeah. lot of battles, in my experience, a lot of the side stuff is like this, where instead mm -hmm. of just doing all three rounds, mm -hmm. which the normal fights yeah. are more like, you're doing just the third round. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so just to uh, mm, make sure um, that uh, we, we uh, keep the right pace, you know, the, so some of the battles are shortened. Right, and so we're looking at the battlefield. Mm -hmm. Shoop here, every two turns at the sum of... Both adjacent units' power is even. Damage all units on the opposite row by one and switch allied rows. If odd, damage all the units, units on this row by one. So we're trying to keep the things mm -hmm. next to him even. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so some of these battles have puzzles, uh, puzzle elements and you have to figure out um, um, what to do to, um, to, to, to win. All right, so any mulliganing uh, mm. tips or anything you think I should go for here for this I fight? I know, it looks like a, uh, you know... Uh, like a nice army to start with. Cool. Let's go with this. Alright, so we are just trying to win this round. Mm -hmm. Some of the other puzzle quests or puzzle missions were things like stopping boulders or things yeah. like that, but this is more of a classic mm -hmm. fight. And I w if I want to put a guy next to him, oh, it's every two turns. So mm -hmm. actually, we can just place yeah. another thing right mm -hmm. now. All right. So why don't we just start off uh, with maybe the war wagon? Just get it going. Or actually, let's go with pikemen. Just start off. Ours is not to reason why. And this is very much like Gwent, but there are some mm -hmm. differences here. Uh, there's only two lanes compared to the, the PvP. Uh, Actually, uh, with the new uh, uh, upgraded Gwent that we'll be oh, using soon, me. we also have uh, two rows in the multiplayer oh, uh, gotcha. version. But th there are some, some differences. Mostly we we can uh, experiment with cards more uh, because we don't have to care about the balance as much. Mm -hmm. you know, in the multiplayer uh, game, we have to make sure that uh, you know new cards don't... Uh, uh, well, like destroy the, the the balance of the game and then make it lopsided. So in, in a single player, we can um, we can uh, give the opponent cards which have you know 100 points of strength or, or um, a lot of armor and uh, make you, um, you uh, figure out uh, how to defeat them. Um, so so we can experiment experiment more and have more fun with with the rules. And. Uh Part of, part of that, too, is that you have things like this morale mechanic. Mm -hmm. um, well, I'm going to try to use some abilities mm -hmm. here and actually pay sure. attention for a moment. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's hard to uh, talk Yeah, yeah, yeah. And talk, and, talk and play at the um, same time. That, that might be a bit of a challenge. But part of that was the morale system where I actually, mm -hmm. right before this match, I like prayed at a shrine, mm -hmm. and then I was able to uh, get yeah. a little bit of a morale boost, and then mm -hmm. that means for my right. next fight, I could... All my guys would be boosted by one. Yeah. So um, we really wanted to make you feel uh, like you are leading a, a, an army, and you have to think about all the challenges that, that this entails. So you have to uh, make sure that your uh, uh, soldiers are provided for, that um, you, you take care of their morale, and uh, you have to um, multitask to make sure that, that you will be successful. And morale is one of the mechanics we were using to that effect. So uh, basically, you d depending on your choices and, and, and your decisions, the, the morale of your uh, army will either grow and or decrease, and um, this will affect how your soldiers fight. All right. How's it looking? I feel like I'm not doing great <laughs> here, but we shall see. I'm trying to buff up mm -hmm. shoot, give yeah. him some armor back. Sounds like a good idea. I feel like I'm actually doing okay. Okay. Not terribly. Mm -hmm. the, the, the strategy of Gwent is always... It's its tricky to, to learn at the start, mm -hmm. I feel like. It's not uh, its not an unintuitive game, but mm -hmm. it's different from a lot of games other people have played, probably. Yeah, it was, it was when we were designing the rules for, for, for Gwent, we, uh, you know, we had this dilemma of either... Um, 
making something that's to an extent similar to other uh, games in the market or, or trying something that's uh, uh, fresh. Uh, and we knew that this means that, that it takes some uh, learning at the beginning, but I, I feel like it's uh, like it's been worth it because um, it's really a, a different kind of experience and, and uh, there's a lot that uh, you can uh, play with and tinker with um, when, you, when you play. Oof, Shoop's getting hurt here. Mm -hmm. I feel like maybe I should buff him up. So what I'm going to do is get this guy down. Mm -hmm. Oh no! Actually, I want to use I'm gonna use Swallow out there, so I'm gonna go buff Shoop. That's an ability from my mm -hmm, commander, yes. which is that mm -hmm. weapon we equipped, and give him the potion so that he doesn't just outright die. <laughs> I feel like we're actually in a pretty good spot. Mm -hmm, with yeah, three cards good. on that side. Yeah. So, uh, so on your side, you you have Miva as your commander, and uh, there are different versions depending on uh, on the, the, the weapon you choose for her. And your opponents also have uh, leaders. In, in this case, it's a uh, leader of a small Nufgardian Nuf regiment. Oh, not quite in range, yeah. is that right? Yeah. Unfortunately. Shouldn't have played that card then. Yeah. Is there a way to just skip the action? Um, not sure. No, I think you actually uh, will have I'm to. I'm going to need to yeah, hurt my own guys. Of your own. All right. Oops. I made a big Collateral mistake there. Collateral damage. Oh, I should have see. I should have done mm. on him, Give me a and then I would have made him able to mm. play the next one. Yeah. These tactics, I'm not, I'm not yeah. picking them up yet. Mm -hmm. But hey, you know. I would take some getting used to. It's a tricky game, mm. and I like that you guys. I mean, Gwent in The Witcher Three was one of those things where it it felt like. It felt like that, right? It felt like every mm -hmm. fight was a little bit of a puzzle. You had to mm -hmm. figure out what the opponent had. And this, the single player goes back to that in a pretty significant way, in a pretty cool way. Yeah, yeah we took it up took it up a notch. And uh, uh, some of the uh, battles are more straightforward. So you basically have to prevail and then, uh, you know, just get more points than your opponent. But, but frequently we are uh, uh, changing things a little bit to just keep it fresh and offer you more challenges. All right, so my opponent's passed, mm -hmm. so we're good. Yeah. We got through that pretty it. handily. Shoop survived. <laughs> the smashed the and there he is. Force. The troll, having grown suddenly pensive, so this is actually Shoop the troll that you might know from the multiplayer Gwent. So he's the you know, shop owner in our multiplayer uh, version of the game, and here he'll be able to learn more about his backstory and how he ended up in the business of trading cards. The Nilfgaardians are a devious lot. Our land they've attacked most treacherously. I love the idea that this shop troll that was just popping open mm. barrels of cards now has a whole story um, and has a whole personality yeah, behind it. felt him. like, you know, uh, there, there's something intriguing to this character and it would be nice to think, like, well, how... how how did it happen that the troll ended up uh, trading Gwent cards? So and we could have just walked away from this Yes, quest, this right? is fully optional. So th there's a lot of optional content on, on, on the maps. And that's great to hear, too, because that's one of the pieces. I mean, this feels very much like a lot of the things that I l remember and love mm -hmm. from The Witcher, right? Mm -hmm. Is is these deep side quests yeah. that you don't even need to go into mm -hmm. if you don't want to. You can walk right past them on the yeah. mini-map here. Uh, that was the idea, to recreate the experience of uh, you know the, the, the Witcher 3 uh, in a different format. Um, so th there is a lot of side quests to explore, and they offer and uh, challenge you with difficult choices uh, um, and, and consequences of the set choices. And, uh, and we also wanted to make sure that each of the side quests um, yes. offers you a little bit of the right, story, uh, you offers you a bit of uh, uh, information about the lore, and even the letters you collect uh, actually contain uh, key information about uh, your allies and your enemies, and reading the letters allow you to um, inform your decisions and be better prepared for what you might uh, face in the future. So reading the reports, reading the intercepted communications from your from your enemies actually uh, makes sense and that's a part of the uh, strategy and uh, of you know being you being the uh, savvy milita mil military leader. Mm -hmm. It's it's just a there's so much more going on in this mm. game too than I was expecting, especially with the whole camp stuff and this yeah. this wide map as we've seen. Uh, we're gonna head towards this main mm -hmm. quest marker mm -hmm. now yeah. and see what that has to offer. Uh, I really love 
just we we caught a glimpse of this map a mm -hmm. while back, yeah. I think, but it's it's really lush. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it is been, very detailed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've been busy polishing uh, our, our maps in the meantime, and I think screenshots uh, don't uh, you know do them justice because there's a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of um, uh, animation affixes that that we really bring it all to to life. So we've reached the city of Dravograd, and as you can see, the the uh, uh, Nilfgaardian attack is underway, and mm -hmm. now we'll have to uh, now we'll have to uh, help the uh, defenders. So funny when you're in the bad when you're in the, the, the you, you guys renamed the game right uh, mm -hmm. semi recently, but when you're looking at trebuchets firing flaming balls mm -hmm. at mm -hmm. a burning castle, you don't really think you're playing went on the, on the surface, no, no. right? So that's one of the reasons why we uh, we, we changed the name uh, to the Witcher ta Tales uh, Thronebreaker because this is uh, much more than just uh, Gwent and the single player expansion to Gwent that we initially uh, planned. So uh, games that we, we uh, make at CD Projekt have, have had this tendency to, you know, expand over time. And uh, uh, the way it works is, you know, somebody comes up with an idea and says, wouldn't it be cool if we did this or that? And uh, it happened a lot uh, during this project. Um, and so just the, the game just grew and became more complex. And uh, it, it feels like a, you know, a single player game in its own right. Are you hoping that... Uh a game like this will then, or playing this will then get people to go over to the multiplayer, Gwent? Um, yeah, that's uh, that's uh, uh, our, our hope that uh, once you uh, you know uh, become familiar with the with the mechanics and, and finish Meath's story, uh, and you you will uh, hanker for for more Gwent, uh, and um, and then we have the multiplayer game uh, for you to uh, have fun with, and also the the, the other way around. I, I think people who love uh, playing Gwent uh, will have a great time playing the, the Frontbreaker because it's just uh, uh, more of the game they love with a little bit of a twist. All right, so this mission mm -hmm. is pretty much a straightforward one of two rounds, yeah. right? Or th up to three mm -hmm. rounds. But there's this enemy on the battlefield yeah. uh, who, if we can, he'll never yeah. run out of health. Or mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We have to kill him in one turn, but yeah. if we can kill him in one turn, we just win. Yeah, so uh, un unlike most battles, this uh, has two uh, winning conditions, or two, op like, uh, two options to win. So you can either prevail, basically, by, by winning two rounds, or you can uh, figure out a way in which to uh, take uh, away 20 points in, uh, from the leader uh, in, in one turn, which is uh, quite challenging, but you know you can, you can do it. So if you figure out the synergies between your cards, you figure uh, out in which order to play them to maximize their uh, effect, you can actually finish the battle uh, earlier. I feel like that would be a hard challenge, mm. though. Yeah. No, I'm just, just focusing on yeah. trying to win it all with these guys yeah. on the board. Mm -hmm. So there, there's a lot of uh, there. There are a lot of different boards uh, for for players to, um, uh, to 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 see and to play on. Um, so we have the boards that we'll also uh, use in the multiplayer version. Um, this this, this uh, oh, sorry, I just pointed to the uh, upper <laughs> part of the screen, but of we course you can't see that. But the upper part of the screen is the Nilkart, uh board. Um, but we also have uh, other. Uh, boards which uh, will be used uh, only in, uh, in the f front break campaign for now. Um, so uh, we use them uh, as a way of, of immersing you in the, in the world and, and really uh, to make you feel like you are on the, on the battlefield uh, facing a powerful opponent. All right, I feel like I need some help here. <laughs> so what would you do in a situation like this? Let me take a look. So... Um, <laughs> so you don't have money in the graveyard, yeah, so yeah, the yeah. medic's not coming into play much. Uh huh. Well, I, I, one 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 uh, way to uh, to approach this would be maybe to play the arbalest um, unit. So we've played a little bit before we started recording, and you managed to upgrade your your um, arbalest, so they might uh, help you prevail. And that was an interesting idea. This is the Lyrian arbalest mm. plus. Yeah. So right? it's an upgraded version of the unit. So uh, when you Expand your camp when you build new structures. You uh, basically uh, gain access to new units, and you also have to the uh, opportunity to, um, to 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 upgrade the units you already have. So I 
can't pass because I used her ability. Mm -hmm, yeah, so you can gotcha. only pass at the beginning of the of the round that you will, that, that you used an ability. You have to uh, proceed with your right with your turn. So maybe that was a mistake, but well, we'll see. at least we'll be able to win this round. Yeah. It's just gonna be a mm -hmm. I've had invested a lot yeah, into it. Yeah. So we'll do that. Mm -hmm. We got the first round down. Yeah. But as as Gwent. Gwen's multiplayer mm -hmm. has so uh, roughly taught me that doesn't mm -hmm. always mean you're yeah, going to yeah, win yeah. if you win the first round. And this guy starting with 25 yeah, power on the board is, is already yeah, a little yeah. rough. Mm -hmm. All right. Probably want that field medic. We're going to mm -hmm. get rid of the pikeman. I feel like mm -hmm. that's a little bit of a yep. weaker card. This is like... I'm going to go with it. Mm -hmm. We'll see what happens. Oh. So actually, what what happens uh, here is that uh, on our way to Dravagrad, we uh, missed an optional side quest in which he could um, face the reinforcements which were on their way to Dravagrad, and since we didn't do that uh, side quest, they are now on the battlefield, uh, and it uh, will make your life more more difficult. After three turns yeah. on turn start, draw cards up to your hand limit. Yeah. So the reinforcements will just keep drawing cards. Uh, well, in this case, uh, after after three uh, three turns, uh, the opponent will draw three more three more cards. So gotcha. I think uh, winning winning this uh, uh, round might uh, be very difficult. So my okay. suggestion would be to pass now. Um, or uh, the other thing I could yeah. try to do is mm -hmm. just try to kill this trebuchet yeah, for yeah, the yeah. next round. Yeah, so but maybe that's not worth mm. it. I don't know. Well. You'll have to, you know, decipher her for yourself. <laughs> I'm not sure. Let me think. I feel like that might be risky because I'd mm -hmm. have to play one, and then another, and then mm -hmm. another. Yeah. And all right, we'll go easy this time. So, as as in the multiplayer version yeah, yeah. of the of 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 Gwent, uh, it often pays off to um, lose one of the rounds on purpose mm -hmm. uh, to gain an upper hand in the in the next round. And thankfully, he's playing a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Yes. Alba! I'm glad he's playing. Yeah, stuff. he just wants to crush you, <laughs> <laughs> break your, uh, you know, the spirits of your troops. Yeah. And we are using a lot of the cards that uh, um, we also have in, in the multiplayer game, but but there are uh, plenty plenty of uh, cards um, uh, that we've uh, made particularly for for the frontbreaker with, with unique uh, card art and with unique ab abilities. Right. So I'm starting 31 down here, mm -hmm. which is not great. Yeah. There's still hope though. What do you think? I like these guys. Yeah, I think we should keep them. Probably should throw back at least a medic. Mm -hmm. I'm going to throw back a pikeman, mm -hmm. too. This guy's not bad, either. Nope. All right. Because he gets armor mm -hmm. and then can use that to, to wipe people off. All right. We're going to start with that guy mm -hmm. so that we can start buffing him up. And I'm actually yeah. going to do this here, just keep him alive a little bit. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, some cards work better if you play them early, and, and the, the card you just played is, is one of them. So basically, it becomes stronger uh, the longer it is on the on the battlefield. So I think that was a good uh, call to, s to start with this. These guys are just going to keep summoning. Oh, but yeah. he doesn't have anything else in his deck now. Mm, yeah. So he'll. So that's kind of done yeah. for now. I'll play this down, mm -hmm. get a bunch of guys out. Yeah. But I don't want to use this quite yet. I'm going to mm -hmm. wait another turn or two. Try to get it to the point mm -hmm. where he can. Uh, yeah. Because next turn, damage. next turn I could potentially do my ability. Okay. Mm -hmm. So here's what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go the arbalist into the ability and then I'll be able to wipe mm -hmm. five out. Sounds like a good plan to me. Probably I want to do against this guy. Now the question is, do I want to wipe out this back row? Mm -hmm. Probably. Well, since there's a trebuchet, I think that's a good idea. Yeah, let's do that. But he's going to summon another guy from his mm -hmm. hand, I guess? Yeah, but so in this case, it's not a reason to you know, worry too much. Yeah. All right, I'm feeling okay about this. Yeah, I think uh, th things didn't look great at the beginning, but <laughs> I think uh, we are think making some progress here. Things not looking great is maybe putting it uh, <laughs> mildly. Yeah. 
Let's see. I'm going to... I kind of want to kill this guy, because if he has any mm -hmm. others in his hand, that would be yep. really good. The other question is... If I play... Here, I'll go mm -hmm. that. Give me a target. Because now I could potentially... I don't know how many more I have in my deck. I think maybe only one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think there's only one more again. copy. So I probably want to play, like, the Illyrian Scytheman here. Because then I can play this guy in the middle and summon mm -hmm. one of each of those, and also now he gets buffed up a little bit. Alright. You want to beat mm -hmm. these guys yeah. down because they keep buffing yeah, each other time. up. Mm -hmm. If I do this... A lesson in humility coming now. I can go there, mm -hmm. go there... Take out one of these guys. Oh, nicely done. Move one of these guys back out of that lane because mm -hmm. there's a nine yeah, unit there max, a limit, right? Yeah. So you don't want to have too many of those. Man, these things beat me down when we were yeah. before we were playing yeah, yeah. too. <laughs> I was winning by like thirty or forty, and yeah. suddenly, yeah, yeah, there was never uh, mind. Of those, yeah. All right, so this is going to be nine damage mm -hmm. if I play mm -hmm. this guy. So. So it won't be quite enough for mm -hmm. that. But I don't think there's any way I yeah. can, so I guess I just got to do it to weaken him. Mm -hmm. That sounds like it. I, I think at this point we can be pretty sure we will win. So. <laughs> yeah, but Mostly you said that Mostly to your before. credit. <laughs> well, I know, I know. That's true. I was overly optimistic before. Move that guy back uh, out, too. We should not underestimate the power of Nilfgaard. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Off to the front, yes. See, they just yeah. keep going. Just keep going and going. All right, we'll do a resurrect. Oh, dude. Mm, yeah, not the best unit, too. Not the best. But I can mm -hmm. keep buffing up, and these guys will keep firing. Yeah. So different cards have different abilities, and some of them trigger whenever you use your leader. Right, that's the loyal yeah, ability, that's right? Yeah, the loyal ability. So when you use that, um, uh, you know, um, when you use that uh, with a plan in mind, you can, you can achieve pretty nice results, as you did just a moment ago. All right, so they passed. They're out of cards, mm -hmm. so yeah. we know we win. Victory is ours. I was, I'm not going to lie, mm -hmm. I was pretty uh, pessimistic at the beginning yeah. of this match. But we did it. Yeah, we congratulations. I, I can't take any credit for it, because <laughs> I mostly distracted you, but this, this uh, went well. So now the Dravagrad is, is freed, and uh, there will be some decisions to be, uh, that you'll, you'll have to make. So we've actually, s this is the city we just yeah, saved. Yeah, so we are inside the city, we've saved it. Ray. Me, me, and I like me. the idea that this is all told mm -hmm. as if it was a story yeah. being told. I do. No I love her armor too. Mm, yeah, <laughs> it's nice. Yet rest on our laurels, we cannot. Caldwell. Where is this set? And I apologize if I missed it while I was playing. So yeah, Where is so the set in the timeline of the world? Uh, so this is uh, before the events of The Witcher One. So okay. The, yeah. So so it's set um, um, in a, during the Second World wi War with N Nilfgaard, which uh, is described in the books. Uh, and actually, uh, Queen Meave, uh, so our protagonist, was one of the you know key characters in the in the war. All right. So now we're saying, uh, should we? Mm. Lend the city our support, which will cost us money, or mm. just tell them to manage. I feel like we should. Yeah, I think, think you, since you were collecting all the loot on our way, you know, <laughs> didn't spare any 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 single barrel. Or we were or pillaging our own people. Stuff. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> so now we can give back. I think like we can, you know, uh, afford some redistribution of wealth. I feel like also, if we saved the city and then we're just like nah and walked yeah, away, that's kind of yeah. you know. The battle we've won. There's just the war that remains, and Nilfgaard will strike again, doubt it not. We must move on. Caldwell, ride ahead to Lyria. My son must call a gathering of the Council of Fears. Tell him so. We'll have much to discuss. Reynard and I will follow with the troops. We shall seek out any Nilfgaardian stragglers, prevent them from rejoining the main force. Okay, so so he actually yeah. left, mm -hmm. and so we don't have his card anymore. That's very for interesting. Now. Yeah, so uh, sometimes uh, uh, certain events will, will uh, either uh, cause uh, some of your cards to uh, disappear, or you'll, you'll gain cards as the story progresses. So in this case, we uh, asked uh, one of our uh, followers, Count Caldwell, to uh, ride ahead. 
and this is uh, so now uh, we uh, use the notice board and this uh, basically uh, puts uh, markers of uh, uh, points of interest and quests on the map in your uh, uh, vicinity so you can see uh, what's there to do. So all these people like us very much, yeah, and we've uh, we've saved the town. Mm -hmm, oh, and there's also these little choices, yeah, so, right? Yeah, so uh, so these are small uh, quests that, that uh, you resolve on a single panel, uh, and and you basically uh, are as, as a ruler, uh, you have to make important decisions all the time, and you're approached by your subjects or by your enemies, and and you have to decide how you want to deal with that. Yeah, and Very cool. I, I love how much there is in this game. Mm. I love that there's you know the exploration, there's the side quests, there's the army management, yeah. there's the actual card game, there's the puzzles on top of that. There's a lot gr going on in Thronebreaker. Mm -hmm. uh, Jacob, thank you so much for sitting oh, down welcome. and showing fun. us a little glimpse. Uh, for more on Thronebreaker The Witcher Tales, uh, stay right here on IGN. Thanks.